All right, guys, going to go through the three games from tonight <clears throat> and talk about all the little things we could have been doing differently, some of the good things we were doing as well, and then just going over things that we've talked about <clears throat> for a long time, uh, like tracking teleport timers, everything like that. Actually listening when Alex relays that information to us and using that information to our benefit, whether it's being aggressive or baiting out teleports or um, just playing around it where we don't uh, try to go too ham when we have a disadvantage. So we'll fly into this. And we're going to try um, some of the level 1 strats uh, starting tomorrow. I didn't want to do them tonight just because um, Don's buddy is the coach or part of this organization. So I didn't want to try something when he already looked at some of our shit. So didn't feel like risking anything. So we did a good job calling out that he started on that top side for sure. Scott Award sees him, so Central knows that he can go. Vertical jungle, which is good. This is why we ward ahead of time. Always need to take into consideration as well the um, summoner difference. We have exhaust versus ignite down here. There are cooldowns, everything along those lines. Pretty sure in most of the games we were <coughs> doing perfectly fine for, <coughs> excuse me, the first like 15 to 20 minutes is just depending on uh, so you got spotted out here already central let's go back and actually see if you would have known or should have known that you got spotted out So the turret actually saw you. You stop here. The turret actually, I'm pretty sure, has a vision of you there. So, as soon as, I mean, you should have vision. Let's just find out here. Let's actually go back and do this the right way. Let's see what the vision. I'm fairly certain. Yeah. So see the the turret actually sees all the way to here. This is something that we we should just know. Um, with the minion wave there, especially. So they saw you right there. So this is something you guys should just be aware of, of the actual vision um, of the turrets and everything, how it, how it bent. So you stood in the area that that it's like the very edge of it. So, And of course, if we're in their position, we're going to come counter gank as well. So we'll, we should know that he would be there. But we'll go to our vision so we can talk about when you guys actually see Jarvan, because we're going in. So as soon as we see Jarvan, you guys are in a really bad spot right now too. You should be eing to try to get out of here, because there's you guys are not going to win this. We already talked about the disadvantage of of J4 versus Urgot in the early parts of the game, and then this is where I was telling you you should be flashing this no matter what, because we cannot risk going down uh, two zero and now and you also falling behind in levels as well so you, you just die for free and you still have your flash so just a we need to learn the actual vision of turrets like um, on both sides so we'll actually I'll just go over it with you guys now just so we're, we know so this is vision from minions so you can see this is it's kind of a diagonal but this is the mark you could stand here if you're on the red side and it wouldn't have any vision um and then up here 
it's literally like just a diagonal slice right here. You can see this little crack will be your marker. Of if you go on that crack, they can see part of you. And then for top side, it's a little different. Same thing. There's this little crescent here. So this is your marker. If you go past this marker, basically you're in vision if you're coming from the red side. So let's go to our side, actually, so we can just see the blue side's vision. So obviously he's here right now. So this is as far as your vision goes. But we're going to go... Um, I'm wondering if you should have eat first. Like he's obviously he got, he can see um, central here. Let's actually go back because this is what I think central was talking about as well. Is you can't block the uh, or like buffer. Yeah, you try you try the E there. This is what he's talking about. So we actually lost the spell here too because this uh, how this ended up playing out. So we actually may have been able to win this, but we weren't aware. I wasn't aware either that it couldn't buffer that crowd control. Um, and we also need to take into consideration that even though he's not melee, Urgot is a very low range. So, yeah. This is just the, the first part. But, Don, you absolutely need to flash that second um, flag and drag there. And you did this in the second game, I believe, Alex. Anytime, you don't need to this game, obviously, but anytime you need to go back early because we just put you in a bad matchup and use your teleport early, please do. Because if you don't give them a kill and you get a little bit of an item advantage so you can sustain the lane, do that all day. That was really uh, smart of you in the second game to do so. So. So time is at five minutes. Mountain's the first dragon. Remember, this is something I want you guys to be pinging as soon as you get in the game so we can talk about, okay, this we really want to get this um, dragon. This is kind of like this is just careless right here. Like there's nothing here blocking you, so you need to black shield this. If it's up, it should be up. You guys haven't been fighting. Guys can't be too cocky. So now we just now we're way behind in the lane because just that little bit of positioning. Look at this. This is bad. Can't can't be too cocky. Even when you're better than the other two. And make sure if this is what you're going to do. <coughs> I like what you did here because we have um, central here. We need to be communicating that you're going to do that because just imagine if you did that. And right as you did this, he took a step backwards. We just want to be in sync. This was I. I really like the uh, the play that you were doing there. Just make sure we're communicating. I'm gonna flash for for snare, so that they know to not back up until you throw it to see if you hit. Um. But yeah, it's good. Got the flash. And they got the ward on uh, central, so they know he's there. So at the same time this is happening, remember, same thing we always talk about, relaying information. And again, same thing. You need to talk if you're going to do this, because look where the black shield was put. If you put it on you, we get a kill. So this is where you, you guys literally have to break down your communication. He's coming back for another time. Central, if you're going to flash for the Thresh, which is the right target, because we just blew this flash, you need to tell them you're going to flash for it. Just like I talked to Mystic about having to do that before, because this shield would be on you then to make sure you never get your E interrupted. Because now the, the, the whole thing's just bad. And this is also the instance where Alex actually said he has a TP advantage, and we're also making this play. So this is just absolute poor communication from us in, in multiple um, multiple areas here talking about if we're going to flash for the um, snare first talking about you're going to flash for the, uh, the 
throwback and then asking about teleports before we go um even though alex just relayed it you should still be in the habit of ask, asking because if central says he didn't hear it and if bottom lane didn't hear it i know i heard it in this game you guys still need to be asking before you you keep showing like this because also remember the information they got was is you came back already once and you had you had killed a ward so they they have the idea that you're down here so they can be defensive and try to set up TP plays like this. So now it turns into a fucking nightmare. That's where communication needs to grow. It's simple things to ask for. You guys don't do it hardly at all. And then that, um, because Jarvan is, he's smart. He knows, now knows that this side of your jungle's up. You guys also did that right when the second buff was coming up. So it also was more of a telegraphed situation. They know you started on the red side. So the second buff is on its way up. So they are very, very sure that you're going to be on this side. Like, like they they just got the kill. But this right here, already the little timer on the map, they they haven't had vision of it, but they know what side you started. So this time is important for you guys too, whenever we're making plays. And if we want to invade second buffs, like we know he started red side. So this is the kind of shit you guys just really need to really need to start thinking about during the game. Now they don't have TP uh, as well as us for a while. So he cleared, I think two camps in red, maybe just red buff, but he got a deep ward on us too. So there, there's so many things that happened bad for us there. And Kalista's 3-0, which is brutal. They also have vision on the, uh, or they did, it just expired. They pinged, pinged on to central. And also, um, just like 30 seconds to a minute ago, we should also know that his second buff came up. So we would have a good idea of where he's at. So we should also know that he's on this side. I think this is where uh, we get two kills back. Yeah, and we get three because of the top. So the yeah, so it was an equal item event, uh, equal items really. His cost a little bit more, but I think. Ours is uh, a little bit stronger individually. So we immediately just gave him three kills and we got three kills back. So we're back in the game. You can see we're only down 1.1k. Not nearly as bad as it was. See, at this point of the game, too. Dom's doing fine versus um, the Corky, even though he's down a kill from not flashing. But this is also something we talk about all the time, is back timings and stuff. Um, you have 2k. If we would have just left the, the lane earlier, basically. Let's just take a look at the state of the lane when, when you... Uh, whoops, I didn't mean to go back another one. Because now we have to realize multiple things here. Most importantly is Jarvan should be on our side of the map right now because of the time, um, the buff timer, the second buff timer. He started red side, so he's on this side of the map within the last minute, and we haven't seen him. So it's just something we need to uh, take in consideration. So as soon as this happens... 
this is what we wanted to see. Okay, so you guys are going to push this wave, and then the next wave is going to, it's not going to touch. This, this, these will crash. We need you guys to reset, because this is just a free dragon if you stay in the lane too long. So this wave and reset. And as soon as you start going up, up the, uh, up the lane, he knows that you're, you're overstaying. Um, and you're, you're not as strong be as you could be right now because you haven't spent your gold. So back time is, is extremely important because they know now exactly what you're going to do. You're going to do this wave and then go back most likely. But that gives him the window of like, oh, I'm free no matter what. I'll be one versus or three versus one if Urgot comes because my bottom lane's here. And on top of that, we had to force a whole bunch of shit out. So just you guys back, your back timings need to be a lot cleaner, especially when you already had plenty of gold to have a nice spike. And then bottom just went back. Why the hell are we fighting? Like these guys just came back from lane. These two right here. Our bottom lane has no mana. They're very low. We use multiple alts. Let's see. As soon as this alt lands like this, this should just be us disengaging. Because no matter what, we're basically two versus four. Because these two can't help you anymore. So after this point right here, it should literally just be Dawn recalling with the bot lane and Central holding the lane. Um, if if they uh, the uh, minions get back to you, which they probably won't unless they hard push it once it gets back to the middle. But this again, Jarvan's all over us. We have to know by now as well that Corky's on his way because Dawn just pushed. He's not sitting in his lane. Like, this is just, this is stuff I should not have to remind you guys of. This is, just because he's going to get a pink ward, who gives a fuck? Like, I should not have to remind you guys of this stuff. This is just craziness. And then that's another thing I talk to you guys about, always checking the actual inventory. I, I bet you money no one noticed that Jarvan had the stopwatch. And it's something he purchased. This is this is the kind of stuff you guys just need to be aware of. Like, way too many just foolish things that we did this game and the other games where this is this is a good alt by Dawn and you showing up. But this is where we just disengage. We can't. We have to know we're two versus four. It's two versus three at the very the very least. Um, but as soon as Corky shows here, now we know it's two versus four. Just let them. You're. You're. No matter what, if Corky's not here, it's two verse. It's two verse three. Just let them have the pink ward. So now we lost Flash, and they got another kill for free, for no reason. And they're getting two plates out of it. Like this is just literally simple simplest shit in the world if they tried to dive um, central one verse three as long as he dodged the fucking Jarvan pop up he would be able to uh, he'd be able to survive and this again just in, in return this is them overstaying because the same thing I tell you guys about they get baited for fucking stupid plates it was a good job by you to just capitalizing on it but this is the kind of stuff that we just did as well this is what we they can't do and we can't do it's just overstaying I that that binding made me want to punch myself in the face too during the game I was like oh it was a free kill got it anyway because he's fucking nuts so now we're in a 900 gold game 
um, and we're going to be recalling right now. This is what we always talk about. We should be setting up to make a play for Harold, like all the all day. Like this is what we talk about, and we did not talk about it at all tonight. Like this should be a recall for Harold. Well, he's on this side of the map too. Like. This is us doing exactly what I was just talking about for them to overstaying for plates. We don't know, we don't see anybody on the map at all. All we see is Callista was just here. Like, we're just overstaying like crazy. Don't get baited by those plates, man. I know it's gold. This is also... You end up dying here, Mystic. Um, Dawn's mid, so get that ward and then just go back around and go down. I don't, I don't know what you were trying to do here. Because Dawn's t um, ult is still on like a five second cooldown too. I don't know what you were doing there, buddy. You're perfectly fine getting, taking care of this vision and putting this there and then just going back. Because you know Jarvan's in this area and you and... Peridian versus AD carry jungler, you're not going to win. If he had his alt, sure, go for it. He didn't. You guys have to be more aware. This is literally just countless things that we shouldn't be doing. Especially, look at this. This She can't even stay in lane right now. We should just be trying to, to 2 versus 2 and have vision of the Jarvan. We know he's on this side already, so we just chill out. She, can't, she has no chance of staying in lane with him right now. Even though she's fucking three and two with blade. That was depressing. That's depressing. That's why I want us to keep working on our champion pools and everything like that. Just so, like, obviously, uh, Central's put time on, on the Urgot, but he's still not, like, 100% comfortable on it. And that's perfectly fine. Perfectly fine putting you guys... This is the first time we've played Morgana tonight as a group. Riven as a group. We've played Lucian, I think, once since I've been here. Maybe twice uh, until tonight. We played it twice. And that's perfectly fine. Scrims is where we try stuff. Matches where we're going to apply what works for us. But we're going to keep trying to grow into more than just um, one one style. One play style. So another free dragon for them because they have all the tempo in the world. He finishes Cleaver and you're fighting him here. This is something I was uh, wondering why you're actually fighting him here. You guys have to pay attention to items. When you get the lane, just or they come back the lane, look at their items. He has you. He has you beat right now. You can't fight him. And on top of that, you got his alt out. Just disengage until it's down, and then fight him. Like, cause if say you um, ended up winning this. It's going to be at an incredibly small margin. But you're still fighting him with his alt. What the hell are we... F what, what's the point? Just let him waste it. And then pop your alt and go in. This is why I really want to... Uh, Incorporate Silas into our um, champion pool. Uh, Lissandra, obviously, I would like to continue to play more, but she's someone that's banned a lot in fives, so it's understandable. It's harder to get her. When we're red side, we may just designate last picking Lissandra if she's still up, or picking her in the first um, rotation. Well, it just depends on bands. That's the thing that's the hardest part is 
what's actually going to be on the bands. This is a good job by you guys. Okay. Immediately right then too though, we could have again done Herald. Like no matter what, we're, we're at a big advantage. He had to go back. We should have done Herald right there. I just, I don't know why we weren't thinking about it at all tonight, but it's a problem. Like you guys were starting to do, talk about it and everything. I don't know what's going on the last couple of nights. Our communication changed and we're just not reacting the correct way. Again, this is when we should be communicating. We both have TP top. So whenever you see Jarvan top like this too, you should be wrapping around to try to dive basically at this point. Um, because this should, so you're not gonna get there in time. Dawn should just be pushing uh, and hitting the turret at this point and just giving this up since we basically surrendered it but obviously standing on the right hand side because that's where our team is you can end up alting or you can join them on the dive um, bottom there's just so many different things we could be doing different here like there's no point in having Don go here either A just do more damage which is the best choice in my opinion because if he roams bottom and, and we're giving up Harrow, we're just giving up one, maybe two turrets. So just having him here and rotate out this way would have been perfectly fine. Um, and you should be going around the backside to dive. This is like an easy time where you should have dived. Instead, Dawn uses Flash. They get Harold. We get we get the uh, tier one bot. But we could have we could have made that a lot better for us. But there's so many just like generic mistakes in these games tonight that are just us not thinking. And this is the type of game too, like when we have a um, composition like this where we have a really hard time of getting onto the back line this is when it's okay for you to keep the yellow trinket uh, central if we get um, the sweeper on to Alex because he has to find a way to flank in order for us to um, capitalize in team fights. So it's perfectly fine if you guys still did that, but we need Alex to be able to try to find flanks on Riven because that's how you just really dominate, especially with Riven Galio. He can get to the back line um, with a good flank and then immediately have the alt come into him. And then we win the team fight basically every way, every time that way. But in this situation, like I talked to you guys about, and you guys did talk about it after a while, is when he builds this first, you can just literally blow him up first every time. And then you can pop Aatrox and then the fight's super easy. Because they don't have, they have literally the Jarvan initiation, if you guys are out of position, and then also the Thresh Hook. That's how they engage. And then I guess um, Callista's alt, but that one's harder to engage with, unless, again, you guys are out of position. So this is the fight. Again, this is what we always talk about, is it's always best to just position mid lane. Always mid lane. And we're broke up. We're two top or two bottom and two, two mid. This is no way we can fight like this, which you guys called out. Um, yeah, this is just really poor positioning. Always, always tell you guys to position on this side too if you're gonna contest a dragon, because once it starts going, if you decide that you can't do it, you just take priority mid and take turret.
But now no matter what, yeah, we were giving them a flank with Corky, which he doesn't have package right now. No, he doesn't have package, but still, we don't want to split like that and give them a flank. That's just a recipe for losing there, losing a fight. So I think this is the fight here where we actually get um, Baron. You guys do a good job just focusing the Aatrox and then immediately going to Jarvan, which is the right thing to do. Nice heal and redemption from us. And then good job of you guys not chasing long and just saying Baron. Alex should be recalling right away though because he did communicate STP. Side lanes will always be, um, well, you both have TP this game, so it could have been either one of you. It just needs to be communicated right away. Because you don't have to worry about Callista because she's way too low in this instance. So this is a this is a really good job by you guys. You didn't chase. You sent someone back. It could have been a little faster. Um, you 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 need to be not in a straight line because you do it again down here too. It just hooks you because it's you made it real easy. I understand they engaged on us and it was fine because we got out with Baron, but be a little more elusive. And this is where their, their driver starts basically trying to give us the game, which is great. And the Atrex doesn't... Oh, he just got his ult back up now, so. But there's no reason for him to go in there. So now we get the counter push and we should get mid. Easy. Oof. So yeah, as soon as you guys get the uh, one turret there, you basically should have just turned into um, one side of the jungle denial instead of running up the lane more with um, them all being there because of the only reason why I'm saying this as well is because of our sideways. We have Dawn and Alex in the side wave. So we should just immediately went basically to deny. It doesn't matter what side you guys went to. Well, we would have lucked out too because both the buffs are there right now. But instead of just going this way, like just, just go deny them shit. And look at their vision right now compared to ours as well. They have a lot of... Pigs also are our, uh, ours is just in the Baron area where we did, where we put them down after we won that little fight where we killed two or three of them. So, so now the game plan is basically you guys can win four versus four, um, but they have to engage onto you guys. So it's basically push and rotate kind of play at this point with your Baron. So you guys would basically be pushing as a four-man group and then immediately rotating to where Alex is uh, to ensure you can get more turrets um, in this situation because our four-man, uh, our siege is pretty poor because of we have um, short-range champions ergot is obviously great on turrets but he has to stand on top of the turret to really you know make an impact on it so the game plan in this should be push and basically rotate so alex would be driving up this lane and as soon as you guys push the one here you would just rotate to him because no matter what they're going to have one or two guys here and you'll be able to rotate before they do and that just creates uh the spacing that we need to take a turret for free when we have baron so this composition is is fairly good team fighting composition. I actually prefer their uh, composition overall um, for team fighting, but we obviously could beat them. We've done it in a few fights, um, but since we don't have a lot of siege, we need to realize that we can push a wave and then rotate to Alex to make things easier on ourselves too. So 
so we still have Baron. And you also, since we do have double TP, you could do a 131 here as well and have uh, whoever has TP be the person you don't rotate to. So Dawn actually has TP, Alex doesn't, so you would still want to rotate towards um, Alex's side because Dawn can TP to you guys if something bad happens. This is why communicating and just looking at things is, is uh, very beneficial. Their wave clear is better than ours um, because Corky can spam. So this was a good move by you guys. I'm perfectly fine if you give up the Infernal because what you did here was exactly what we talked about 9,000 times. But this should, no, just we literally going to try to get this turret and then rotate out. We should not be trying to fight them right now because we're still not stronger. We have to realize we're not stronger. And this is what I'm telling you guys about like being excited. So turrets down. Look, look at this. Such a good like little macro macro play and trade with you guys. They got Infernal, but you got tier two turret. Just rotate out of here. If you just look at this, Dawn's down two levels, even here, even here, even, and we're up one level, but their, their mid lane carry is up two levels. So he's at his tier three of, of ultimate. Like that's a huge factor in team fights. And this is the one that we, we basically, um, the person that we need to be, like the, the last two fights you guys communicate, your communication was great where you're saying uh, fight, fight their front line first before we even worry about Corky and Callista. And then this one, we completely abandon it. We're just going on here and abandoning our strongest guy. just ends up being a bad fight for us. I believe Jarvan gets away too. This is why I talk about you guys being exciting though. Excited. Just doing stuff like that too often. Made Finally made the, the play that we've been talking about since I've joined you guys as a coach. Where you guys rotate. You position dra uh, Dragon Side mid and rotate on him. And it, you guys did great there. But the the entire time you guys should be shot calling is we're st still at a disadvantage with them and we have to take into account they just got infernal on top of them having a gold lead so we should just be wanting to ro rotate out not force on them there especially when we only have one strong member right now which is peridian you guys have to keep in in your back of your minds who their strongest player is and who our strongest player is every game because now look it turned into an inhibitor for them. Two inhibitors for them. Because we took a fight we shouldn't have. We're the ones forcing. When we have to counter them, basically. These are just really simple things that we should be thinking about. And this is stuff I remind you guys about all the time. Who's their strongest player? Who's ours? We should just be protecting pretty in at this point in, in this game. But we're trying to force. And we're getting engaged on over there, it looks like. So, these guys are doing the right thing. I know you guys are trying to get wards and everything, but since we're split, we we have to know they can just engage on us. Callista's alt, Thresh hook, Jarvan. There's no reason we should even be showing that. We could ward this bush and then just wait till our guys get um, everything shoved mid. Instead, we're trying to do too much without the team. 
So now they're just getting a free pick. And on top of that, at this point, Aatrox is still stronger. He's a full item ahead of uh, Alex at this point. And they just got Infernal, and they have two mountains. He can rip through uh, turrets if he gets to them. Like, you you guys did so many different solo queue things in this game. It, it was disgusting. Especially when we've made so many good decisions in previous scrims and stuff. Like, there's no reason if our two guys are pushing mid because that inhibitor's down that we should be wrote we should be like basically giving up position to try to hit them with a binding or i don't even know what else you're going to do you should have just been rotating mid with them and then going in as a group to uh try to at least get vision on the baron so they couldn't just do it for free so there was plenty of mistakes in this game this is also um a i want us to try new champions ergot is good in this meta right now in the jungle um, but we need to learn the champion as well so it's perfectly fine if we try out champions like we haven't played ribbon top yet um or morgana until this game it's perfectly okay if we try out champions and we lose but if we lose because we made 19 different um, poor decisions individually and as a team, like that's unacceptable. So you guys have been making progress. Um, then yesterday happened where, in my opinion, it was just a big shit show of most of us just not really taking it serious. Um, tonight, we played versus a lot better caliber players than we're used to playing. So I don't know if that affected our mental or what, but this is this, this type of stuff. You guys individually have to be able to, to know this stuff on your own. Each game, have it in your mind. I can't do this. We shouldn't force. We shouldn't chase all the stuff that we've been going over now for two weeks because we lose games like this when we could have won um, because we made so many just little mental mistakes that we should have already corrected by now so all right on to the next game